Hi right, guys, it's Lindsay Nice, so keep me voice, and I am looking at a couple of JPM Impact MPU boards. I've got one here and a couple others down there. Um, they are partially complete and they don't work. And pretty obviously this one isn't going to work. There's some couple of very important parts missing, but I had a rummage around and I have them. And there's no schematics available for these. And that puts a lot of people off, but you shouldn't let it. You shouldn't let it put you off. If you have worked on a lot of different techs and platforms before, and you know how these parts work, then you can just take a detailed look at the board and sort of work out stuff yourself. Yourself, You don't need the drawings. You can work them out for yourself. Also, a lot of manufacturers carry their tried and tested ideas from the previous tech, to the new one, so if you look around the board and you see stuff you recognise from before, it probably does the same job. So, confused? Too difficult? Nah. I'm going to show you how. Right, so how do we go about this? Well, you pick a start point and you work your way out. So, typical start point is the power plug. So, hang on. I'll get you. A pointer, a lot of you probably do. It's not plugged in, don't worry. So we start from the power plug and in fact, screwdriver. Right away at the power plug, I see something familiar. I see a LN393 here and a ZN404 here and some resistors and stuff, some capacitors. And that is very likely to be a voltage sense. That's impulse detector, maybe. See, you already figured out one circuit for yourself. These are power filters, obviously, that are tied to the various lines. Um, and if we continue down, I see a little bit of corrosion or something there, maybe. You know, something's dropped on the board. Not worry about that, the board's going to get clean. Continue down, we've got an expansion socket. In fact, we've got four of them. These are for the impact daughter card, your CPU. Your CPU goes down here, and then you've got Sound one probably up there, ROM. You can see the ones for the sound and the ROM have these little inserts to stop you plugging the CPU in the wrong slot, although I wouldn't imagine it makes a great deal of difference. So these are our daughter cards and we can see a 501 buffer in there. Buffer to some of the data bus maybe. And that would make sense that it's sitting up here near the sound card because it's a 16-bit system, but the sound card's 8-bit, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'll explain that at a later date. It's, it basically, the sound card uses an 8-bit programmable sound generator. So, is this buffering data for the sound, maybe? Possibly. And we keep going. Keep going down. Leave a crossing here on the effects. I've got a transistor there. Seems to be tied off one of these pins on here. Something to do with resetting the CPU, possibly. Go further down. Another 541. And what's that? A 7445. Now, I know that's a 1 of 10 driver. And this is a buffer. And you can see loads of diodes and some switches and a percent key around. So, that's your switch matrix. Yeah. See how easy it is? We're figuring these things out already. This is your switch matrix. If you're unsure what something does, look at this data sheet, and then that'll give you a good idea of what it's doing on a circuit. So, I'd imagine this is the switch enables, the sources, and that's the sinks. And these all form the anti-ghosting for the matrix itself. Maybe blocking diodes so we can turn various switches on and off, stuff like that. Percent key forms part of the switch system as well. Yeah. So we go from here, and we'll go across a bit. We've got a socket for lamps and switches, and you can see some lines are going across here. See? Coming across. And it is, and it is, and everything. Like power resistors, they're obviously onto the lamps. Some transistors here. Hmm. Sinks, maybe? They won't be the sources, they're too small. These are the sources over here. This is the source transistor. 
big things. The actual could be no, no. This would be pre drivers and this would be the main drivers. So these will have something to do with driving these. Um, so we keep going. Mm. Not quite too sure what those things are. I need to look them up. L six or threes. I think they're high power op amps or something. We'll come back to those. We'll come back to those. 7406 there, that's a logic gate. That's got some that's gonna have something to do with selecting these transistors. Right, so keep going. And keep going. No a little bit of corrosion there. Our big sockets. And if we look carefully, we can see there's a load of lines coming down to the lamps. And up here, there's a load of lines going up here. And these are obviously the rail drives, so one of these has a lot to do with the rails and one of them has a lot to do with the lamps. The lamps, sorry. Not sure which one yet. Remember, we'll just try to work things out for myself here. We're making an educated guess. We won't always be spot on, but we can make a good determination that there's a whole lot of traces coming down here, so one of these is doing, doing the lamps, one of these is doing the rails. Yeah, we can see our real sockets up there. And we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So, yeah, you see if you look here, it's this one that's doing the rails. You can see a lot of traces coming up this way. Yep, straight in. So, you one possible rail drive, you to the lamps. May have that wrong. We can look at that later on, but it's a fairly educated guess that that's going on. Sorry for the shaky camera here, I'm doing this late at night. Then we've got another ULN203 2803 there. So what does that one do? Not sure at the moment. Not sure. Something to do. Something to do with mirrors, maybe. Possibly something to do with mirrors. So it's up there. You want an serial input? That's coming down to here, and that's a serial line driver. And the data port's nearby, so that would make sense. This chip here is obviously for the meters, but it looks like it also does something with these. Maybe getting used as a little driver for reset and status lamps. Reset is obviously going to come from over here somewhere. Okay, so we keep going. Got 32 there, I'm not sure what that's going to be for. See an oscillator chip here. 4069 with a couple of resistors about it, and then there's a crystal. So we've got a system clock at some point. Hmm. Yeah, system clock. I, mean, I see another crystal here, but this is for this 68681. It's obviously tied to this. Which again, it'll be to do with our data port here, so that's going to be tied to... What is it? That's going to be doing something with this. See? Quite simple when you figure it out. Sometimes you can get yourself overcomplicated by schematics. Another transistor here, not at all sure. Again, something to reset, possibly. This is a 71055. Yeah, it's a expanded interface chip. It's an interface adapter like a 6821 or an 8255, but a bit bigger, and it looks like a lot of its lines are going down here, so, you know, has this got something to do with the alpha display? Another 803 here, but it looks like it's going here, so, not sure what that is. No, keep going, keep going. LEDs, this is dri these are driving the LEDs, I think. Or is it coins? Not sure. Not sure because it's a coin mech interface down there. No, 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 no. These are the coins. These are the coins. These are the LEDs. And that's about all we've got. A little coil there, which looks like it's directly on the power input. A couple more things down here. Pace slides. But we know from an impact system that the pace, the pace slide drivers are actually on a separate board. Behind the coin tubes, so we'll be there. But yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we worked out a lot for that, a lot of that ourselves just by looking at it. And nine minutes without schematics, we know that the daughter cards go here. That this chip has something to do with buffering eight bit, bit data bus onto certain cards. We'll switch matrix sections down here. It's probably controlled by something else here, but it's mostly here. Pre drives or sinks, sources. LEDs, coins more than likely, and then your face, trees, and our two big chips which control the reels and the lamps. So, are we right? Well, that's the beauty of it. We don't know if we're entirely right, but we are making an educated guess. And it's a, it's a, a fairly good educated guess that one of these is controlling these and one of these is controlling these. And I know from experience that both of these things are actually the same chip and they can perform different functions depending on what socket they're in. It's also, that's a no-brainer, that's a switch matrix, so we know we're right there, but that's probably controlled elsewhere. I know from experience that that's 7445 takes a binary number and gives you one of ten outputs, so the binary number's being generated somewhere up here somewhere. But we know enough to make a start. So, we can get on with doing some repairs, can't we? Yeah. So the backstory between the, behind the, this board is these were all dead, and these AC chips, these custom chips, have been removed for working games. I mean, there's no sense of keeping good chips that you could take out on a dead board. But, if I hold these carefully, I have a couple of these chips that I salvaged years ago. And Now there's one or two bent pins. Just give me a focus here a bit. Yeah, there's the odd bent, bent pin there, but it's fixable. I don't think it's going to short on anything. So if I pop that one in there, a little bit tricky to do this on a camera. Seems to slot down okay. And let's see pins. Yeah, these pins look alright on this one. And if we slot that one on there. Yeah. Just check the orientation. The both come up with that. Yep. We now have a complete board, but I say it's very unlikely to work, so shall we see what it does? Right, so we're powered up. Powered up very briefly there, no shorts. Power supply is working fine, so let's see what we get. Just for nothing in it at first. We should get a reset light coming on instantly. Then we get a status light coming on instantly. But I'm not trusting that, and I'll show you why at some point. What I want to look at at the minute is do we have a system clock? And we can find that up at one of these resistors here, I think. Not that one. There it is. The board system clock's running. Do we have a clock at the 68681? We do. So the system clock and everything's running, but you see... That shouldn't be on, it should be this one that's on. But I think that that's maybe a red heron. I don't think we have a reset problem. Just bear with me one moment. Let's stick some cards in. 
And this is a working processor. It looks a bit dirty, you just need to clean up, but it, it, it does work. So, slot that in and reapply power. Again, state is stuck on. However, that doesn't make any sense to me because that reset light should come on and I've got a working clock. So I'm getting a clock down here and I've confirmed I'm getting a clock here. And look, that got brighter. There's something amiss there. That shouldn't be dim and bright. That should be off or flashing. So let's have a look at something here. Pin 9 is the function code. That is the 68,000 changing its function code according to what interrupt is getting. So straight away I know that those LEDs down there don't make any sense. Because the processor is coming out of reset. Now it's actually trying to do something. So what that tells me straight away, you see, that there's tell that there's telling me that, that chip there, that 2803 that's driving these two LEDs is shorted out. So that's going to be a good start to replace that and then get some sense out of these. But I can also interpret that that's supposed to be off and when it goes bright, it's on. So that's telling me I have a memory access fault and what that tends to be is one of these buffers here, one of these two, they're directly on the CPU's data bus. One of them shorted out. So, We shall change some parts and retest. I'm also probably going to remove these and clean up the solder behind them. I think the board will even boot without these. Won't boot properly, it would be alarming like a trooper, but it'll boot without these. So, let's get on with it. Let's, I'm going to remove that. and remove that and replace them and see how we go on. Hey look daylight, it's the next morning. Alright so, before I went to bed last night I did a little bit of research and I made a couple of discoveries. One, we're sort of half right about this. This is buffering 8 bits of the data bus. The reason for it is most everything you see on here is an 8 bit system. The card system, the card system here is sixteen bit, but most of the parts on the board are eight bit. Or well, maybe there's sixteen bits going into these two ASIC chips here. But yeah, also this seven one zero five five here. You see, this is pin compatible with an eight two five five, which means I have spares for these. I have spares for this already. I may have another set of spares for this. But what I can do with this now is put a socket in here and try an 8255. It might not be exactly right, but it'll work at least for testing. So my plan is now, I think the most likely suspect to stop this boot at the minute is either this, or it's going to be one of these. So I'm going to take these out and put sockets in, cut this out, and see how we get on. Now yeah, don't worry about this port here. Previous one I burned it with the solder now. It don't matter. We've got some spare ports. That'll be all right. Might change that in the future, but for the minute, these ones will get us up and running. All right. All right, here we go. I used my desolder rig there. I had to buy I had to buy a new gun for it, but that's all good. Use my desolder rig here to take all the parts of interest off. I'll go, I'll go. Notice I got a little bit of damage there, but. Fixable, we'll just have to apply some link wires. We'll be able to fix that on the back just by a bit of buzzing out. So, 
Uh, misplaced in there, here it is. I've got myself a socket. If it bothers to focus. Yeah, that'll do. Got myself a socket. I've got myself a couple of spare H five fives and some other bits. So we'll put a socket in here. We'll just replace these two parts for no good. Fix a couple of broken traces here and then we'll retest. So we've replaced this and we we'll replace that. Let's see how we get on now. Haven't added anything else in yet. Right, so we've still got the status light, no reset light. There's something that's a bit different. The board's working. Still have an issue somewhere because that status light is on dim. But yeah, the board's booting. I'd imagine it's alarming for no percent key at the minute because all oh, this is missing. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to hazard the guess and I'll say that this was causing the fault down here. Could be maybe a shorty trace under here and being some things to fix. But that's working. Just need to sort out this weird status light problem now. Now I know that from looking at other boards that these should the inputs to here should be high and low, but they're not. There's one high and one floating, so I'm going to suspect that even though I've disabled part of this by cutting that leg, I'm going to suspect there's a fault right here. So I'm going to replace this, right? Give me one moment. And so the troubleshooting begins. Yeah. Yeah, excuse me a minute. Hard to stay on the pins with one hand. But that should be beeping like a trooper. Pin 7 of U3 is supposed to go to the reset pin of our 8255 here, or 71055, whatever. And I strongly suspect and that's why it's also not going to here. I think there's a trace between here and here is broken, and that's why our humble little reset light LED is out. So, we need a link wire from here to here, and then we'll see what sort of difference that makes. At the minute, when I have a chip in here, the board doesn't run. Take the chip out, it runs, but it alarms. So, we'll put a link wire in, and... We'll test again. I actually might not need a link wire. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I, it's the joys of working at home. I got distracted by the door or something. I haven't. I haven't soldered this side yet. <laughs> right, let's get that soldered up. There. Now they're soldered up. <laughs> now they're all soldered up. Um, don't ask me how I did that because I ain't doing nothing until I ain't saying anything until I see my lawyer. But I totally forgot to solder that whole side, and I've been testing it for about ten minutes without all those pins left lying flown in the wind. Uh, just goes to show you nobody's infallible, including myself. But yeah, I still suspect we might have some solder shorts somewhere, but or some. But I will clean all this up and we'll, not solder shorts, sorry, open pads, op, solder brakes, but I'll clean all this up. I mean, that's scratched there, but it's okay. Clean it up and test again and see what it does now. Right, so resolder all that saying, still no joy, but I found another brake. We should have pin 5 here which is the reed strobe going to U22 here and it doesn't so that's a break in that trace and I need to rejoin that before this will do anything because at the minute it just sits dead nothing wrong with the chip the chip is pin compatible every single pin is the same the 71055 may be a little bit faster but yeah we'll fix this trace now and then we'll keep going this is what you've got 
this may seem a little bit of a pointless exercise to you as you're watching this, but it is. What you got to do is save all these old things. So, that's the same break here, here. Now, has that been done by me when I changed the socket? Has that been done by a previous owner? Was it broken already? And that's why the board failed. I don't know. But it needs to be fixed before before this will do anything. So, yeah, we're getting on. But we're making good progress already, as you saw. As you saw, we've gone from not knowing anything about it. I don't know something about it, but some people who are watching the video won't have to go from not knowing anything about it to working roughly out what things are. To changing parts, to solving the initial fault that was stopping the booting because it was something to do with this down here. And now we've got to solve other faults that we create ourselves by changing things. But it's all part of the process. So we'll fix this pin 5 here and then we'll see how we go on from there. This is probably going to be impossible to see. But we we'll zoom in way up. What can I see what I'm doing? That tiny, tiny line through the trace there. Just there. That's the break. It must be oxidised some because no matter what I do, I can't solder onto this. So. Link wire through the via, we'll solder it to there and we continue. And there's the fix. Go to that via there and then that jumps off to pin 7 over here. Alright. And it's annoying short circuit time again. Pin 1 is grounded. Pin one U two two dead grounded. Traced it back. So I've been bloody annoyed, but traced it back and it's under this. So this thing needs to come off. Got the short. Let's see if I can zoom in. It was. Where's my finger? Ooh, huge finger. That trace there. That trace there broken and bent into the path of the ground. So that's what was causing all my issues. I fixed it. Tiny BB the solder of it. Don't know if it holds or not, many other with link wire. And there's my fixed wire for the other trace break. So that's as far as I can get just now. These had to come off anyway, the sockets were pretty poor. I don't know if they were new or, new or not, but there was a couple of bent pins in them, they weren't making great contact, so I've taken these off. Yeah, I can zoom back out. I've taken these off, I've taken that 681 off to check underneath it, that's alright, 681's alright, that'll go back on, that socket's now fine. I've cut a pin on this, so I changed it, and I fixed my... Lap stuck on problem, that was just, well, that was just to connect with my uh, 12 volt. The 12 volt connection had come out of the power lead. Which gives you that weird effect where it's, uh, it doesn't really stop the board running if I remember, but it jams those lights on because it's a crafty way of connecting these and this to this. It's something to do with pin 10 on here. It lets you know straight away that if you've got a rail down the power supply, but I don't think it actually stops it running. Anyways, that's going to be it for the minute because I've run out of parts. I need to wait for new sockets and a socket for here. And we'll get back to this. There we are, all cleaned up by pain. Now you can see, you can see, you can see, you can see there are some damaged pads and some damaged tracks here. That's alright, Claire. No, my wife hasn't got the ready COVID. No, it's something. She's just gassed herself with the cooker, basically. No, not. But, yeah, it's not too bad. It should run fine. So now we need to 
concentrate on fixing some damage traces down here. And we've got one there, one there, and we've got, I believe that pad's gone there as well on the other side, but it's here on this side, so that's not a problem. But this one's going to need fixing. That that thing's a power pin to be honest because it's a big trace here so I think that's power pin. But yeah so the mission to fix this board continues and you can see how much cleaner that looks and how much nicer it looks with the two traces fixed will be the solder. I may have to put a little wire across them but yeah. So we continue on. New sockets in. Check the traces are good, even that one in the corner there is good. Right, let's deal with this. Right, we're all reassembled. Back in, actually wasn't too bad, I just had to scratch off a wee bit of the mask and solder across to it. Sockets are in. I've got my probe just casually balanced. On that pin line there, it's not touching any other pin. So, moment of truth. Now, we don't know if this works or not. It's a pull out of another board. It's an 8255 though, which is the same as a 71055. I know that works because it was donated by a friend. Let me see a big tick on it. He's already tested it, it's good. So, let's see. See what happens. Boom. There we go. It works. Does it work fully? Well, I don't know. I haven't figured out how to connect. I haven't got an alpha display for it. I was going to say I haven't figured out. I have figured out how to connect one. I think... JPM back in the day were planning to put these in different styles of cabinet. I don't know if maybe they're going to put pin headers here or something, but you see all these solder pads here, and they're all over the board at various places. Yes, there's not any there, but there is up at the reels there, and there is down there, and they go to that plug there for the LEDs. I think maybe they were trying different styles of connectors in the factory and then they settled on these amp things, which are bloody useless by the way, they break far too easily, but there you go. But I reckon if I did a bit of digging in the manual and find out what pin was what, the alpha display, I can make myself a connect connector and put a couple of temporary pin headers on here. And that would allow me to connect an alpha display. Although I could literally just do it off the 8255 because that's what drives the alpha display. Well, it's, I think it's 8255. It, may, it might be this, but I think it's 8255. But there we go. She's alive. From scrap board to, well, we think working. So what do you think was wrong with it? Well. It possibly could have been this. If this was changed out, you see this socket's bad now because it's all crushed here. But that doesn't matter. We've got socket 3 and they're good. I think possibly could be this, but I'm not so sure. I think it was our 71055 because when I had that the first time... I saw this button was when I had this at the board. So I'm going to put my money on 
this. So we're using an 8255 for testing. Before I send the board out to anyone, it's going to get a new 71055 in it. And these are my spare chips, but I think I'll just leave them in here because what will happen is when this board goes to wherever it's going, the U1 and U2 chips are in the, the board that's coming out. And the board that's coming out is a green corrosion infested nightmare, by the way. Uh, to give you an idea of how bad it is, most of this top stuff's green and there's burnt tracks here and stuff. It's been lying in a cold environment for a while. Cold, damp, whatever. But the chips that are coming out of the old board, if I can salvage them, they'll be cleaned up and then they'll go into the next spare board that I do. And I have got another scrap one I can look at, but you know, probably not today. It would involve taking more of these sockets off and finding a replacement for them. I've got one spare 84 pin square socket now. And it's heading for a System 5, unfortunately, so it won't be going into this. Now, yeah, so that's from dead to finding shorts to finding broken traces to, well, at least putting the program, which is a lot more than it was doing beforehand. Beforehand, we had a million and one things go wrong. Now, as you can see, we're executing the program we've got to be because the CPU has to tell that U1 chip to flash that LED for that to happen. So, yeah. So what do you think? Do you think... I reckon... If you know how something goes together and you know roughly how something works, you could probably fix just about anything with those schematics. You just have to think about it a little bit. Think about what does this do? Look up the data sheet for this. Look up the data sheet for this. Trace some things out. How do they connect? Where do these connect from? We, will, we know from previous experience these connect here, but just trace things out. Draw diagrams. Borrow working board and record some signals. And that, that it was doing that, that uh, I found that, that pin 5 there was stuck, which happens to be select pin. Which certainly wouldn't be helpful then, because that would mean that that was selected all the time. But, yeah, we are working, alive and fixed to an extent. Next step for this board, my hand's shaking a wee bit there. I'm not nervous at talking to you guys, don't worry. I'm not scared of my own videos. Well, maybe scared of my own shadow, but never mind. Just kidding, well, never mind. But um, yeah, the next step for this in a few weeks' time will to be go in a, the machine it's heading for, and then I can show you the damage on the other board. Right, so that's it for the minute. That's it for this video series. Hope you found it interesting. If you didn't, it's well, I like doing these things anyway. So feel free to comment, subscribe, join the channel, share it to your friends. If I can get the viewership up a bit more, I will buy myself a tripod and some better editing gear and we'll get these videos looking at damn sight better. All right. Bye-bye from the House of Magic for now.